we added a phone number that if you want to talk about faith. I remember yeah. that. And we added a website, Chat About Faith, to the end of that. And as of last year, we had over 750,000 people that have had conversations about faith because of what was listed at the end of that movie. When there's been times that I'm like, what am I, what am I doing? How am I impacting people? I, I look yeah. back at things like that and I'm like, those are people that were sitting in a movie theater and were so moved by what they saw in that movie theater that they yeah. made the action to actually pick up the phone and yeah. call somebody to yeah. talk about their faith. Working with the local church to take the hope of Christ to every student in the United States. This is First Priority. Now here are your hosts, Steve Cherico and Brad Skelling. Hello everybody. Welcome to the First Party Podcast. Brad Skelling here, and I am glad you are listening in today. My name is Steve Cherico. I'm also glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. we got a good show in front of us, Steve. We do. We're talking to a friend. A good longtime friend. Absolutely. Yes. YPS, our last YPS conversation. That's sad. This is our last conversation. Good, yeah, this has been a good five week segment. I've enjoyed it. Has. It has. Yeah. And it's good to get a different perspective. We're going to get another yeah. perspective from Jeremy today. Yep. Uh, not camp like we've had from a couple others, but movie industry, Christian films. Yeah. Jeremy works in faith films. Uh, uh, another relationship that I've just had the good fortune of, man, being around the guy since he was 16. He was a youth leader in mm-hmm. one of the first youth groups I ever led. Mm-hmm. And never in a billion years did I think he was going to turn out to be a guy that's. I mean, he'll talk about it, right? He's a niche. He's one of 20 maybe in the world yeah. that do what he does. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And he's on the board for First Party Nashville. He is one of our board members. He's actually been a staff staff member early in our time. Yep. When we were that. operating early, he was yeah. he did some part-time marketing for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Jeremy's been around. That's right. Cool. Yep. Well, I look forward to that. You got a story for us before we jump in? I do. And it's actually, it works out really well. So Jeremy, myself, and one other staffer who's no longer with us, they're in another part of the country now, Okay, dreamt about taking on a leader summit, yeah. like has been done in Birmingham, like has been done in Arc- Arklatex, some mm-hmm. of our other cities, right? Yeah. And just before March of 2020, we had signed a contract to do that leader summit in September of 20. Hmm. And then all that broke loose. And yep. so we paused. Uh, met with the people that were our backers for that leader summit mm-hmm. summit back in 19 and 20, uh, met with them recently and they were like, Hey, it's, it's time. Let's okay. knock this out. Okay. So we have felt the momentum with clubs rising up and all the new clubs that we suspect are going to happen in the greater national area nice. in the fall. Uh-huh. And so we are going to do, and we're announcing that we're going to do our first, first annual we yep. pray that the Lord allows it every year, but <laughs> right. uh, Leader Summit nice at Rocket Town, downtown. Okay. Downtown Nashville. So our five county area, people uh-huh. can all get to. Yep. But this is a during the day, kids the school leave their day. school as they get, as soon as they get there, they jump on a bus. Field trip. And they take a field trip and all these buses converge at Rocket Town. All nice. the kids unload. Yep. So by nine o'clock from eight to nine, we're just getting lots of kids in and we'll have inflatables and fun stuff. It'll be great, right? Okay. But at nine o'clock, we hit the ground running really hard. Okay. Worship, leadership. Yep. Uh, just calling out their identities, right? Mm. Anyway, I, I can't be more excited about it because it's one of those things that just drives me is, is students being leaders. I love it. Right? Yep. And then Chick-fil-A or somebody like that, Blue Coast Burrito. I don't know. I'm putting a plug in there. When do you guys want to take it on? But anyway, <laughs> when it, somebody's going to provide them food for I lunch. Love it. Nice. Our suspicion is that we'll have a minimum of 150 students. Okay. But we could have as many as 450, depending on what the school systems say about it, because it's our first. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but that's Thursday, September 14th at Rocket Town, okay. 9 to 2. And uh, we're just, I mean, that's my story time is we're just pumped that that is finally happening again. I love it. I love and it. part of my point is Birmingham's really good at this. Yep. We need to announce theirs. Right. Yeah. I believe Arklatex does one now in a smaller view. Yeah. We need to announce theirs. Like it, anybody who's doing those. Sure. We need to announce them. Well, they'll they'll see most of those on our socials. We we Christine is really good at pulling some of those events. Oh, um, good. From each one of the chapters and districts and areas that yep. are out there and saying, hey, this is going on right now. Cool. Be in prayer for their club training or their leader training or their fundraiser or whatever the case might be. So keep an eye on our socials. Mm. FP of America is out there on Facebook and Instagram. Like it. Cool. Like it a lot. Cool. Well, should we jump in with Jeremy and uh, we can chat afterwards? I think it's a great idea. Sounds Let's go. Good. Well, as Steve just said, we have Jeremy Carlson with us here this morning. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, I don't know that our audience has heard you before. This is the first time. Welcome. Um, introduce yourself a little bit, who you are, where you are, and why you work with Steve Cherico in First Priority. Yeah, so I'm Jeremy Carlson. I live outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and I have known Steve for ooh, 
25, almost 30 years now. Long time. Uh, we long time. Sad for him. A lot of therapy. Right? A lot of lot therapy. therapy. Yep. <laughs> That's coming later. But uh, we have served together on staff at a church. Yeah. Um, we have worked together with First Priority for years. I am part of the First Priority Nashville board. Nice. And so I can't get away from it. Right? Yeah. It's in your blood. It's in my blood. That's awesome. And he won't tell his story this well, but he's a father of three incredible girls, many of right. which play softball for me at mm -hmm. some point, right? Yeah. He's got a great podcast yep. called The Everyday Dad, yep. which if you are a podcaster and you haven't checked it out, you need to. Some of his mm -hmm. guests are... Gosh, some of his guests are so good. It's one. It's one of my listenings. I don't know if you listen to it. You should. Once in a while, yeah. You should. Yeah. Um, and then he works in the movie industry. Nice. Yeah, which is super cool. Which is, I don't know what we would say that was expected, right? No. And, so I worked full time with Steve at a church, and then without Steve at a church, and then God kind of well, Steve had moved on to doing first party. Yeah. At that point, and then God kind of said, "Your next avenue of ministry was instead of focusing on the hundred students I had every week, was to focus on." the thousands and thousands I could experience a movie in theaters. Hmm. So for the last 11 years, I've worked on about 35 different films from wow. I Can Only Imagine to War Room to most recently Jesus Revolution. Yep. So I've had the ability to have my fingerprints on movies that have been seen by millions of people around the world. Wow. So. That's awesome. Yeah, super cool. Super Can't believe cool. it's been 11 years already. It has. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. So you're part of the actual movie world. What are you doing in terms of telling the story? So what I did when I shifted from being a youth pastor full time to working in movies is I work on the ministry side of how people can use movies as a tool for their ministry. So we work with from curriculum to partnering with ministries to help get the word out about films and uh, doing discipleship along those ways. I kind of say all the time that I work with a, a conversation can start in a movie theater and then it can be followed up with in the local church or across the mm -hmm. dinner table. Cool. Yeah, you just got done with Jesus Revolution. Tell me some stories from that one in particular since those are probably pretty fresh. What have you guys heard as the outcomes from that one? That movie was absolutely crazy. I first started working on that movie in 2019. Uh, wow. And when the development of the script was happening and then it was supposed to shoot in 2020. We were three weeks away from shooting that movie when huh. COVID hit. Wow. Yeah. And so we had to shut that down and we didn't know what was going to happen with it. We didn't know if a studio like Lionsgate was going to invest in a movie that was titled Jesus Revolution in a post pandemic era. Yeah. So they came back and we made the film and I worked on it for about 12 months marketing it. Uh, that movie was just such an encouragement. It finally was a film that churches and believers could see as a rallying cry to a revival that happened mm -hmm. and wanting it to happen again. Nice. So every single person, if I met someone that was saved in the Jesus movement, man, they came up to me after every single screening with tears in their eyes, talking about how that was the story that li they lived and they experienced. Um, if I met someone that was younger, someone that worked with students, I did a lot of screenings at youth leader events and things like that. It was like, how do I get my students to want that to happen again? Hmm. And it's interesting because we've, we've talked over the last few weeks in the podcast, Jeremy, of the reality that the we feel in the youth culture world, those of us that are trying to not only enable students to reach students with the gospel, yep. but even students that are being raised in the gospel, right? In both areas, we feel like the tide is rising. We feel like the boats are beginning to level up. And so in the midst of that, we are hearing about revival in places. And it's not fair to call it revival, but that's what we're going to call it for a minute, right? Somebody else can actually name it in the, in, in the historical document someday. But we're hearing about God moving in ways that we um, haven't heard for a number of years. And then you've got this movie that comes out and it begins to interact on another level. So did you have any moments where it was like, oh my goodness, like this is real, like this is really happening right now? Yeah, the movie came out in the middle of February, which was right, the weekend before was right when they stopped doing holding the Asbury Revival mm -hmm. services. Okay. Uh, we actually had some people negativity be like, that was all manufactured to help promote the movie. Sure. It was like, yeah, that sure. wasn't it. Like we can't, like the amount of time it takes to put into these things, we choose a release date 18 months in advance on yeah. that one. Asbury was just a move of God that yeah. uh, got people thinking about revival happening in our day and age. Sure. Yeah. Um, so it was amazing just to see that happen. It's, you know, we, we need that in our culture. We need yeah. that. We need people to be willing to be open to revival happening and not thinking it was something that happened, yeah, but it's, it's something that can happen again. I, 
another part that I do love about a movie like that coming out is that sometimes we try to recreate just picking on us as believers. Sometimes we try to recreate things and then we find out that's not really how God works, right? God, God works in mysterious ways and we've got to get ourselves out of the box. And I feel like it also allowed people to say, put some of those things down and say, yeah, I'm just going to let God be God and I'm going to be faithful in what I'm called to. And this is just a good reminder to me that when people Mm -hmm. do that, Mm -hmm. God moves. Yep. Right. Because you you couldn't have put that story together. There's no. no way from 40 some odd years ago that you would have been able to make all of that line up. So it's just neat that it got told now. Yeah. And even just God's timing is so much better than our timing. Like I said, we were supposed to shoot that in 2020 and all that happened. And it just wasn't the right time. The, mm. the country wasn't ready for it. The world yep. wasn't ready for it. And now it was more of a receptive time. I love it. I love it. When we look back, you always see God's hand on stuff like that. You're like, yeah, you can't orchestrate Asbury and this movie coming out. It just, it's how God works, right? Well, and that, that list is long, right? You yeah. can't just blame Asbury, right? You got to go no. down to LSU. You got to go down to, um, gosh, forgive me, the, the, you got to go down to the dozen to 18 campuses that all had a moment. Yeah. Yep. Asbury was the flame that it ignited. That caught but, the attention. Exactly. Yep. But it's it's incredible number of places where people are like, well, we just we started in worship and trusting God and yeah. we're not going to stop. Like he hasn't closed the service. Well, I just mm-hmm. thought you'd do that after an hour and a half. Yeah. Right. That's just what you do now. Yeah. When he says we're done, we're done. Yeah. Well, and we're not really on the topic of revival, but we are. So we have to remember also that revival happens every day in America yeah. in the lives of people. God renews the burden uh, in, in people in the lives. It's just not on a mass scale. It's, it's kind good. of the, the conversation we're talking about here, right? We want something that's 24 hours a day for the rest of our lives. Yeah. And, yeah. and it does happen in our lives um, as God moves. Love it. Mm-hmm. So the Lord moved pretty big in that. He's moved. Again, I've been friends with you a long time, so I've seen you work on War Room. I've seen you work on a number of films where God, Woodlawn, there, God has just moved, right? So what do, you, what do you see in the next 12 to 18 months? What's God doing there when it comes to the industry that you're in? You know, what we I, I've been blessed to work on some great films. I can only imagine War Room, yeah. Overcomer, Breakthrough. Whenever we have one of these movies kind of break out and be super successful by what Hollywood would judge it, we always see an influx of people wanting to make more movies. Oh, wow. Um, and they're trying to kind of attach to that. Um, what I see coming down the road is some better films that are really focused on it. And people don't know, it takes two to three years before when you start the process of a yeah. movie before it ever hits theaters. So what we're seeing now started in a pandemic and is coming out of it. And so what we're gonna see for the next 12 to 18 months is movies that were started before all of this. So mm-hmm. that's when we really look at it and God's timing is perfect because uh, I'm working on a movie that's going to be coming out uh, next year, which is all about family. It's all about the family unit holding together mm-hmm. through adversity. Uh, that's going to be real encouraging to people uh, and real. It's an uplifting story. Um, that's true. And so that one's coming out. I'm working on another movie this fall. That's a, it's about a girl that needs a transplant and just the church community and her church community rallying around that and mm-hmm. supporting that and, and being there for it. So. Man, that's good. It's very good. Love what you do. Yeah, Love it's it. a it's a unique thing to do. There's a lot of people, I, especially youth pastors. A lot of youth pastors are kind of bent a little bit more towards marketing because that's what they have to do. Yeah, they have yeah, to tell market the their church. Yeah, that's good. And they have to tell their story. And so I've gone into people all the time at events. They're like, hey, how do I start doing that? And I'm like, there's like 20 people like me in the world that do this. And yeah. I'm blessed to be able to be one of those people. It's wow. not a, there's not 45 different agencies you can go work for that do this. It is a small group of people that honestly, I feel like God has chosen and uh, we've been able to work together. Yep. Um, a lot of these films, it's, it's pretty much the same players that uh, we try to find in what is working at that time. Nice. We don't. We're not just like that PE teacher that's just going to roll the balls out and let the kids play yep. every single time. We truly try to identify. Okay, where it, what is happening in the country? What is happening with this story? Um, who is the crowd that would really see this film and want to raise it up? Uh, when I work with ministries, I try to find ministries that their mission and objective aligns with the mission and objective of the film. Sure. So we're not putting a square peg in a round hole. We're trying yep. to, if we're working on a movie that has a fatherhood bent, we're going to work with organizations about fatherhood. Yeah, that's good. If we're working with a movie like Jesus Revolution, I worked with youth ministries about a revival that happened and trying to happen again. Sure. So. Sure. 
Yeah. So the connection for me, Jeremy, in this, you know, not just that we're friends, but the connection for me is this. What First Party does, it takes the gospel to students. It's a niche, right? Yeah. We, we are a small group of people across the country that believe students are the best opportunity to reach other students with the gospel, right? We are going where they are with the tools of the gospel, which is the same thing that you do on a regular basis. You are taking something where people go on a regular basis. More people go to a theater than go to a church, I bet. Yep. I bet. Right. Yeah. And so you are going where they are and providing an opportunity for them to hear good news. And so I, I appreciate that about what you guys do, because it is a niche. Yep. Yeah. And there's been times with movies like I can only imagine we the first time I, I screened that movie 14 months before it hit theaters for a uh, denominational meeting and had two hours worth of people that wanted to talk to me about that movie after. First really? time it had been shown publicly anywhere. Wow. And so I remember sending an email being like, we got to be ready for a response with this because people are going to want to respond. Yeah. And so we added at the end of that film, we added a phone number that if you want to talk about faith. I remember yeah. that. And remember we that. added a website, chat about faith to the end of that. And as of, and so that movie came out in 20, oh man, 2014, a long time ago. And we added that phone number, we added that in there. And as of last year, we had over 750,000 people that have had conversations about faith because of what was listed at the end of that movie. Really? So wow. when there's been times that I'm like, what am I, what am I doing? How am I impacting people? I, I look yeah. back at things like that and I'm like, those are people that were sitting in a movie theater and were so moved by what they saw in that movie theater that they yeah. made the action to actually pick up the phone and yeah. call somebody to yeah. talk about their faith. Mm. Mm. FOMO was real for them. They were fear of missing out. So they uh -huh. went to it and then they turned out, oh my gosh, there's so much more. Yep. Hmm. Yep. It's good. It's good. Well, Jeremy, thanks for being on the podcast yeah, today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good. Thanks for uh, hanging out with Steve all these years and being on his board and, and uh, things of that. As we land this point, you got any uh, words of advice for the first party staff members out there, board members? You know, I, we've alluded to it and we talked about it with, I do with movies is you just got to find a way to tell your story. Yeah. Um, you just got to find a way that is going to people are moved by hearing something that is true, hearing something that is right um, and aligning their vision to that vision. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a way to tell your story. That is when Steve and I talk about FP in Nashville, that is what we talk about all the time is we have to find a way to share what is happening yep. and has happened and is going to happen. Mm. It's good. It's good. Very good. It's good. Keep it simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't make it complicated. I know yeah. that's what we do all the time. Make it really complicated. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, let's make it simple again. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, well, thank thanks you, for dude. Joining us. Well, yep. You're welcome. Grateful. Yep. Well, Steve, I like hanging out with Jeremy. It's a story I've heard before. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I've known him for probably the 12, 15 years I've lived in Nashville, at least exactly. the 12 years I've lived in Nashville. If exactly. not all 15, I've been on staff with First Priority. And yeah, it's, it's just good to be around him. And yeah, he's got a new perspective with being in the movie industry. It's something I can't wrap my head. I don't know how he does what he does, but he does it, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you know, Faith Films has come a long way. It has. It's come a long way. Yeah. So for him to have walked the entire journey of that, mm -hmm. you know, when there was just little stuff out there happening, yep. to major, major studios grabbing stuff and him being in meetings with people that you know, are way above you or my pay grade when it comes to, <laughs> right. you know, just uh -huh. whatever. So, yep. uh, it's fun that it's also fun to just hear, you know, his side of this is what the Lord is doing. Yeah. And this is, these are the conversations I'm having. Yeah. Um, and then you, you add the side that he's like, like we do in podcast land, which we hope it's a benefit. He's out there doing his fatherhood podcast. Right. right. Yeah. And that is with, you may not know this. The other guy that's on that podcast is his co-host uh -huh. is also in that industry. Oh, really? So they, they, were traveling together so much they were just like you know what's the one thing that is missing and the everyday dad idea came up it was mm -hmm. like hey we we can interview tony dungy yeah like those are great guys but what if we interview guys that are everyday good dads yep. in industries that we're connected to and it, yep. i mean it's just a great podcast i love it i yeah. love it yeah I, I love uh again gaining perspective from somebody who's out there following the lord um yep walking right alongside of us, has a passion for campus ministry and uh, yeah, part of your board. Right. And right. Uh, we're just, we're just working together. If it touches youth or those that serve youth culture, mm -hmm. then we have to have a connection. That's right. We don't need to be all in. We don't need, it doesn't, but we have to have a connection. We, we have to have an we understanding. Do. Yeah. We're common for, working for the gospel, working exactly. for the kingdom, furthering the kingdom, sharing the good news of Jesus. Jesus isn't a curse word. He's a savior. Right. Like so, it. I like it too. Nice job. Cool.
You as well. Thanks for lining that up. And next week, we'll be back in studio with some of our friends as well. Can't wait. Yeah. Those of you who have been following along, please like, please share, please comment. Please make sure that uh, you do those things on your favorite podcast platform so we can continue to build this. Thank you for that. That's right. And until next week. See you. Later. Later.